Hello, my name is Matthias and welcome to the FPL Scope and this video where I'm going to talk a little bit about my decision to free it in Gaming 29 and see overall if that has been a good or bad tactic. I think it's going to prove over the course of the season that it's going to be a decent tactic at least, but looking back at Gaming 29 on its own, it's not looking so good. But uh, I'm going to dis discuss a little bit why I think it's still a pretty good tactic. But first of all, at the start of this video, I just want to address uh, this week. It's international break, so I took a little bit of a break myself. So this is my first video back since Gaming 29. It's not because I was super down about Gaming 29, because yes, I did expect uh, a green arrow and be in inside the top 10k at this point. Uh, but that didn't happen. I did say something would have to go completely wrong for me to get a red arrow on a free hit when a lot of people were struggling to get 11 players on if they didn't free hit. Uh, but that actually did happen. Uh, I got a red arrow and uh, I'm down to 13k overall now uh, instead. But yeah, I'm not too worried to be honest. But yeah, I did mention Game 29 just being a terrible game week in, um, overall and it started already 8 minutes into the game week when uh, Regulon, who was a pretty huge favorite among free hitters, got a red card straight sent off for Brentford, and Brentford could see the penalty as well, which for me, as someone that didn't have Flecken, I was actually pretty happy to see him not save that penalty, because that would have been the worst case scenario if they had uh, gotten a red card on Regulon, who I have, and then Flecken would have saved the penalty when I don't have him. So for me, I was pretty happy about that, but most people on free hit had both Regulon and Flecken, so that was a terrible start to the game week, which was uh, going to be only one sign of things to come for this game week, which was... Absolutely, absolutely terrible, because if Regulon had stayed on the pitch, he would have been on set pieces, he would have had some attacking returns potentially, maybe they'd only been conceded if they didn't, have, if they hadn't conceded that penalty, and the red card, playing with 10 men, is going to be a detriment to both Regulon and Tony, who are both really popular options this week on a free hit. Uh, so yeah, that just started the game off terribly. Um, I had Fofana on my bench as first bench, just in case Watkins didn't play. Uh, and seeing as you know what happened in this game week, yes, Fofana, he did score. He did also miss a major chance in the first half. Really should have had two goals this game, uh, Fofana, but missed an open goal in the first half. Um, made good of his own promise in the, in the second half. Made it up for himself after that mega miss and had a goal in the second half. Ended up with eight points, which was really nice. That's also a trend for the whole game week. Basically, the strikers, or mostly the unknown strikers or more unpopular strikers this week, were really, really good. Uh, as we'll get to with a couple other uh, strikers as well. But Fofana ended up getting 8 points. Really good game for him. Uh, and Brentford was just uh, a travesty this whole game week. Unless you have Christopher Ayer from, from Norway, who scored a, a late goal for Brentford to delete the clean sheet for Burnley and everyone with Charlie Taylor or someone like Bettinho, for example, on a free hit. So that was actually a huge win for most people uh, on, on free hit because most people didn't have Taylor. A lot of people that didn't free hit have, had Taylor. So... That was one of the big like wins, I guess, for free hitters in in Game Week 29. The fact that Taylor lost his clean sheet uh, in that game, but yeah, two one game for Burnley. Didn't really expect that. Expected the Brentford to be the winning side, but when you get down to ten men at the start of the game after only eight minutes with a Regulon red card, that basically uh, was a sign of things to come for that game and for the game week as a whole. Looting and something Forest was kind of more mm, uh, sort of what we expected, I guess. I don't think Luton have been the best lately. Uh, and yes, they are now ahead of Forest in the table because of the points deduction that Nottingham Forest got in the aftermath of this game. But for this game, Nottingham Forest were the best team. Anthony Langa was another pretty popular free hit player. And again, the popular free hit players got less points than they probably should have had. Uh, Regulon, for that matter, if he had not gotten sent off and still, if he hadn't, if he had just blanked, he got, would have got two points rather than the minus three points that he did get. And that would have been a five-point swing again as well, which was which would have been really amazing. But uh, not amazing. It would have been uh, a lot better for people that free hitted. Uh, when it comes to Nottingham Forest, Alanga was a really popular pick. Gibbs White was also a popular pick for that matter, and he scored pretty well. Got an assist. But Alanga was really close to getting an assist uh, before the first goal that Forest scored, um, where Origi had the shot cleared off the line by Reese Burke. Really great block from from Reese Burke, who scored a goal in the end for or had an assist in the end for Luton and was uh, pretty vital to Luton uh, in that game. But that easily could have been an assist for Langa. Instead, Gibbs White assisted uh, Chris Wood, who started up front for Nottingham Forest because uh, Taiwa Oni was injured, wasn't able to play in this game. So anyone that went for Wood and Gibbs White were happy about that. Obviously, uh, Langa didn't get his assists, uh, which he could have had just prior to Origi, and then in the second half, Elanga had a pretty major chance as well, which once again was cleared off the line. So two clearances off the line from Luton hindered Elanga from having an assist and a goal, which would have been a massive hole for him and anyone that had him on a free hit. So he ended up blanking as well. 
another disappointment this game week, but in hindsight, I don't think Alonga was the worst pick, to be honest, because he looked pretty lethal in that game. Uh, it was pretty close to getting both an assist, which was a really nice assist, by the way, and a goal where he was really close to scoring. He shot it, but Kaminsky had a pretty good save with his with his foot, and then uh, a Luton defender cleared it off the line as well, right before Ilanga got his goal. Uh, and then Nottingham Forest, as they usually do, scored a really scrappy goal towards the end of the match, um, and uh, <laughs> made sure that Nottingham Forest didn't keep a clean sheet either. So for someone like me, who had a lot of Burnley and Nottingham Forest defenders on uh, on his bench, I actually had a bench score, I think, of 31 points, I think, before both Burnley and Nottingham Forest conceded, and they lost a lot of points from that. I had Matt Sells and um, Williams, Nick Williams from Forest, who both conceded in the late stages against Luton there. So my bench, uh, which I wouldn't have uh, gotten anything from if uh, if they had gotten that many points, they lost most of their points uh, in general, apart from Fofana, who actually gained two bonus points because Burnley conceded, and he was... Uh, the guy who scored the winning goal for, for Burnley. Uh, next game, Fulham against uh, Spurs, and most people had triple up on Spurs, whether you were on, on a wild card or not on a wild card. Son, Madison, Pedro Porro, Udogi, those guys were really popular, regardless of uh, your strategy, your chip strategy in this uh, this game week. Uh, and obviously that led to Spurs just losing 3-0 and being completely outplayed by Fulham, which was kind of surprising, but at the same time, Fulham have been a pretty strong home side this season once again show their show their worth and speaking of showing their worth Rodrigo Moniz has just been absolutely on fire since the transfer window where Fulham brought in Armando Broja to be sort of their new striker but then Moniz took his chance and has been taking his chance ever, chances ever since and has scored a lot of goals and scored two goals in this game week he was the big winner this game week if you had Rodrigo Moniz whether you had a wild card or whether you had a free hit or if you had um, just a regular team without free hitting Muniz probably made your game week really, really good because he scored two goals and again showed why he's been a really lethal striker lately. And maybe you're probably missed the boat at this point. Maybe for game week 30, if you want a one week punt, he could be a good player. But he's someone that if you were not forgetting, especially, he would have been essential to have in this team for this these past few game weeks because I think he's been like the fourth highest scorer the last um, last six, seven game weeks since he basically got the starting spot for Fulham. So he was amazing. Spurs, not so amazing, conceded three goals, didn't even score a goal. Fulham were the only team to keep a clean sheet as well, so Anthony Robinson got an assist. Uh, he got a really nice score. Uh, Bassi had an assist taken away as well, which would have been a really nice score for him, but he got a clean sheet, at least still, and Bernd Leno also got, an, got a clean sheet. So a lot of clean sheets for Fulham. Two goals for Rodrigo Moniz. Sasa Lukic, a really unknown player, and then FPL terms at least, scored a goal as well for Fulham. So... Again, really um, surprising result there for, for Fulham and a huge haul for anyone with Rodrigo Moniz. So um, good times for, for any of you guys uh, if you had Rodrigo Moniz in your team. And the final game of the game week was uh, West Ham against Aston Villa. And uh, in this game, Aston Villa, or West Ham actually had a pretty good uh, had pretty good control over the game. You can see from the expected goal there, 2.04 for West Ham, 0 0.63 for Aston Villa. West Ham took the lead through Mikel Antonio, another really good striker this week. So you had Fofana, you had um, Chris Wood, you had Moniz, and you had Antonio. So basically four strikers that were really good this, this game week. But again, the two most popular strikers, whether you're on a free hit or not, this game week were both Tony and Watkins. They blanked, but then four other differential strikers really scored a lot of points. So Antonio scored a goal, Vladimir Sufal with the assist. Nice goal for them. But West Ham would not keep a clean sheet either, so anyone with Areola in goal, mostly people who were not on a free hit, but also me, because I backed West Ham in this game as a West Ham fan, um, they saw Areola concede pretty late when uh, Moussa Diaby perfectly set up um, Saniolo, another pretty unknown goal in terms of FPL assets. Uh, that made sure Aston Miller got the goal and a draw in the end. But West Ham, Jared Bowen is another also another is also another uh, really popular player this game week. He could have had an assist and a goal, but they were both taken away from VAR decisions against West Ham. So VAR were not on uh, the side of West Ham this game, or maybe for a penalty, as Miller had a penalty shout uh, that wasn't given either. But, uh, but yeah, two goals disallowed for West Ham. Uh, the last one towards the latter stage of the, the match in injury time. Took a long time to to sort this out, and uh, after several checks, they found out that Suchek had handballed it deliberately, apparently, and that was the reason that the goal was not given for Bowen, because he could have had a goal there, he could have had an assist for Antonio, who could have had could have been a two goal scorer as well uh, earlier in the half. 
but it was not meant to be for a Sam. Mohamed Kudus as well, who did not have the best game. I uh, watched him with a. Uh, <laughs> I watched him and was really hopeful with him scoring points because I had him in my fail team. I'm a West Ham fan, so obviously I wanted him to score anyway. But he had a pretty disappointing game, but he did have a ball in the back of the net as well. But that was also called off for, I think, a free kick against Antonio on uh, Martinez in the Aston Villa goal. But I'm not quite sure why the referee blew his whistle and why he didn't let the the shot go off from Kudus and, and was able to review it afterwards either because, yeah, he blew the whistle before the ball went in and couldn't review it afterwards, obviously. So Kudus could have had a goal there, but in all, all in all, I think Kudus was kind of disappointing this game week for anyone that had punted on him as well. So he blanked as well. So in the end, a lot of um, not-so-popular players scored, uh, or not a lot of, but some not-so-popular players scored goals and the most popular players, uh, whether on a free hit or not, basically blanked this game week so that led to a pretty bad game week like i said for myself who free hitted this game week 16 points in total which is absolutely awful not helped at all by the minus three points from from Rigelon. he was actually a doubt for this game as well but he was uh, back just in time for this game and then just in time to be playing eight minutes and then get sent off with a red card so minus three from Rigelon was really bad uh Udogi did nothing Dalte did nothing uh, as well got subbed off at the half as well because he had a slight injury uh, Ariola with three points in goal could have been a higher score, which would have been a huge uh, benefit for anyone not on a free hit because most people went without Ariola on a free hit, but most people who played it straight up without a free hit had Ariola in goal. So that could have been another huge hole for anyone that didn't free hit. It could have been so much worse for free hitters as well if Ariola and Charlie Taylor had gotten a lot of points. But, but yeah, Ariola with three points. Son as the captain for me blanked. Madison blanked. With two points, Bowen blanked with two points. Kudus got a yellow card as well, one point for him. Elan got two points. Like I said, he could have had a really massive score if he had the, that goal and the assist. That would have been a, a huge hole for him, but two points for him as well. Blank. Tony blanked with one point and Watkins blanked with two points. So terrible game week all around. I can see on my bench as well, Fofana with eight points on the bench. I couldn't decide on that third striker, and I went with five midfielders instead with Kudus and Elanga accompanying the more popular Son Midas and Bowen trio. Uh, and then end up working out for me and as you can see a red arrow i did not expect that at all leading into the game week so pretty disappointing game week for me overall but the good thing for me as someone that did use his uh, free hit this game week was the fact that the results in the fa cup were sort of going for in my favor uh wolves went out against coventry which was uh, pretty surprising so that means wolves have a double game week now in, uh, in game week 34 and the same goes for, for Bournemouth, which is another team that has been uh, really popular for people on free hit because they had a double game week in 28 and then blanked in game week 29. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, several people have uh, Bournemouth players like Solanke and Sabarni, for example, which which I have in my own team that is not a free hit team. And some people even have Neto on top of that as well, which was which would have been amazing as well with them having a double game week in game week 34 as well. So. Uh, that went the right way for free hitters and then the other really surprising result was Man United beating Liverpool in the, in the cup which means that Liverpool play in game week 37 instead of playing in the, or playing game week 34 rather in the, rather than the game week 37 which is another huge plus Man United and Newcastle play in game week 37 uh, which sort of jumbles up things a little bit there for anyone that wanted to free hit in game week 34 instead so I think overall, all in all, I think the free hit chip has been sort of saved this uh, this game week as well from the fact that uh, gaming 34 and gaming 37 look a mo lot more manageable now and better if you have used your free hit and you don't have the wall card, especially in gaming 30 or 31, if you can use that in gaming 35, for example. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, now as well, looking into my future plans and what you can do if you free it in the gaming 29 and why I think in the end free hit 29 will end up being a pretty good tactic, I think. I think it depends on your team, obviously. Some people would have had, if you didn't free it, and you had Rodrigo Moniz, you had the 20-point hole from Bowen, you had the massive hole from Son, and you were able to still keep Saka and Palmer for those game weeks, and you basically just didn't care about Game Week 29 and had like six or seven players that game week. That's probably the best tactic that could have happened, because if you still have your free hit and you still don't need to wildcard as well in Game Week 30 or 31, I think that would be ideal, probably. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, even for someone like me who has used this free hit in, in game 29, looking pretty hopeful for the next few game weeks, as we'll see with my team going forward now. So this is my current team, as you can see, um, this upcoming game week. Uh, with one exception, one transfer, as you can see, I've done one transfer here, and that is Phil Foden, who plays Arsenal, out for Mohamed Salah, who plays Brighton. 
I luckily had enough money in the bank to do that, to do that even though I have Holon and I still kept Saka, assuming he's back fit to play. But even if Saka's not fit to play against Man City, which I expect he will be, because uh, he's he probably has just an international break injury, I'd still be able to put in Garnacho here against Brentford away, which I might still do regardless. I might just bench Saka in this game anyway, but that's beside the point. But I think in general, I think this team is looking pretty good, as you'll see for the next few game weeks. Salah in game week 30 is my plan. Game 31, doubling up with Liverpool with Darwin Nunez against Sheffield United at home. Having Salah and Darwin in that game seems like a pretty uh, good deal for me uh, in general. And this would be obviously Saka playing rather than Garnacho when he plays Luton at home uh, rather than Garnacho. Uh, but as you can see from my defenders, a lot of people are struggling with defenders this week, but I have Gusto against Burnley at home, really good fixture for him, really good uh, matchup, and uh, Gusto has been amazing lately as well, he's a pretty popular player to pick up right now in FPL, really happy that I have him currently. Uh, Brantwaite, which is a pretty good player, playing against Bournemouth, maybe I would play uh, someone like Nuri instead, because uh, I don't, well I do have Watkins, so regardless I have Solanke or Watkins playing against one of my uh, defenders, but Nuri has some attacking threat as well, and with the way Aston Villa have played lately, Maybe Aknori is going to be the, the starter over Brantford for that reason. And I can still bench Gabriel, who plays Man City, which is going to be a tough game for, for him as well. Um, so yeah, my team in game 30 is looking pretty good. In general, the best captain's options in Salah, Son and Palmer. I have all three of them. Pretty happy about that. So that's looking, that's looking pretty good. Then in game 31, a uh, pretty good team here as well. I could start Sabarni over Gusto. That could be something that I decide to do. And I think my tactic now is just starting Ariola for the next few games, because Ariola just seems to get random points in random games. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just going to start him regardless. Uh, I don't really have much faith in Dubravka keeping a clean sheet, so until I get a new goalkeeper, it's probably going to be Ariola in goal for now. But, but yeah, still think this team in game 31 looks pretty good for me. Salah against Sheffield United, Darwin against Sheffield United, I still keep Saka playing against Luton. That's pretty good. Palmer against Man United should be really good. A lot of home games this week as well. Hold on against a pretty leaky Aston Villa defense. A lot of players will, uh, or a lot of managers will look to get hold on back in for this game week, especially uh, if you want to, because yeah, Man City don't double in game week 34, so uh, that will be a huge, uh, huge benefit for for anyone that doesn't want want to go with uh, City players, I guess. But if you're free hitting in 34. You should probably have Holland um, and then free it in 34 and then get Holland back for game week 37 where he's going to have a double game week. So, so yeah, Holland's going to be a pretty popular player in game week 31 and I have him already. Don't need to transfer him in. I could just transfer Darwin in beside him instead and have a pretty good team for game week 31 as well. Then game week 32, my, still, my um, option currently is getting Daudraya for the double game week in game week 34. I also get a pretty good uh, Arsenal double up in defense. Brighton is not the best team offensively, so um, so yeah, I think Gabriel and Raya could be a good uh, duo here. Um, could also do Raya for minus four hit in game 31, but doing a hit for a goalkeeper when I don't really need to seems like kind of a waste of a transfer, so or a waste of a minus four at least. I can just do that transfer the week after in game 32, so I still think this team is looking pretty good for this game week. Again, Salah, Son, Saka, Palmer, the popular standard midfield with the... <laughs> Four of the best players uh, you can have, basically, from four really good teams, four really good attacking teams as well. And then Solanke is, is pretty good against Luton. Uh, Holong is just about, should be a pretty good game. And Darwin against Man United, we've seen what he can do against Man United before as well. In my defense, still really good. Really happy about Gusto and Atnori. I've seen a lot of people wildcarding, bringing in both these guys. Really happy that I have them still. And uh, using my free aid in 29, uh, I didn't have to care about them playing in 29. And I could have them for the foreseeable future. So... I think this team is looking pretty good for giving 32 as well. Giving 33, wouldn't even do a transfer, would still just keep the same team. Could play Granacho, I guess, but I still, again, really like Salas on Saka Palmer. Really like Holland Darwin and uh, Solanke. You could switch out Solanke, I guess, for someone else as well, but Solanke has been at home. Solanke has been really good this season, so, so yeah, I don't mind keeping him either. Especially seeing as in game week 34, we'll have a double game week, and I would do two transfers. That would be Son out for Eze, who has a really good uh, double home fixture there against Newcastle at home and West Ham at home, and Trent Alexander Arnold in for Sabarni, because uh, Bournemouth play Wolves at home, as Nilla, uh, or Wolves away, and Aston Villa away. Don't really expect Sabarni to keep a clean sheet, and I have him enough money in the bank by selling Son and getting Eze to do Sabarni to Trent Alexander Arnold playing against Everton away and Fulham away. I could also just bench Brantford, for example, place Liverpool at home, where he most likely can see it, and then Nottingham Forest at home. I could potentially bench a double game week player for someone like Garnacho or Palmer, even if Palmer is still looking good at this point, and Arsenal not looking so good. But as you can see, 11 players. This is without using a single hit as well. No minus fours in any of these uh, game weeks, as you can see. 
uh, just a single transfer, single transfer, single transfer, no transfer, and a double transfer here. And I'll have 11 starters that have a double game week, or 10 starters that have a double game week. Holon is the only one that doesn't have a double game week, but it's Holon. So basically, I wouldn't really want to change him uh, either. I could keep Sabarni and do Holon to a double game week striker instead, but I don't know. I think this is just looking better for for what it's worth. So, so yeah, I would just keep Holon there. Maybe I could keep Sabarni and go with, uh, I don't even know who I would pick here from uh, one of the double game week teams. Maybe Kunya if he's back, could potentially do something like that. Uh, but yeah, pretty happy to just have hole on this game week as well. And then with the free 29 strategy that I've gone with, the good thing about this, especially looking at this team and looking how good my team is for these few game weeks, I don't need a wall card this game, these game weeks, which means I can save my wall card for game week 35. Uh, and this is also a double game week for both Brighton and Chelsea. And I get Petrovic, Palmer, and Kunku. Maybe I'll go with Gusto here uh, instead rather than Kunku. It depends how fit Kunku is looking. It depends how fit Reese James is looking and if Gusto is going to keep playing. Uh, but if Reese James is back and Nkunku are back, I think Nkunku could be a really nice uh, differential shout here as well, who people who are feeding him 34 would not be able to have. Uh, and I'll still have double Brighton here as well, Van Heck, who's a really cheap defender. I have Gross, who has a really nice game this this week, and then I can sell him as well before the double game week in game week 37. I think he has a really nice double fixture as well. Uh, I would have Saka. I could again do Saka out and Garnacho starting. That will be a conundrum for me, Saka versus Garnacho in a couple game weeks. Uh, but as you can see, a lot of players here that double in game week 37, uh, which is going to be really good for me. So on a wildcard game week 35, I get two two doublers from Brighton, three doublers from Chelsea. I have just a really good squad overall. I have some pretty good players, Palmer, Foden, Saka, um, a lot of good midfielders that you want. I don't have Son, but he plays Arsenal this week and then City the next week, so or Liverpool the next week, I should say. Um, so I don't really mind not having Son for these game weeks. I can bring him back for game week 37, as you'll see. Um me do in that game week most likely but yeah pretty much like this team quite a lot we have man united playing against uh, burning at home really nice for them double man united here even triple if i want to do garnacho rather than, than saka or foden for example maybe foden will be rested for this game maybe we get some early team use and foden gets rested and then garnacho comes in for foden uh, that would be ideal probably because because uh, yeah um, it would be really nice to have that option as a backup lascelles as well against sheffield united at home could also play rather than any of these guys if van heck gets injured for example could always do that. So, really strong team in game week 35 with the wild card, obviously. Game week 36, I can do without any transfers. I have Chipper and Las Elsie and Spurring away, looking like a pretty good fixture for them. Uh, Man United have Crystal Palace away. I think that's also a pretty good fixture for them. So, I really like the Newcastle and Man United uh, double up or triple up even for game week 35, 36, and 37 when they double in 37. Uh, and I save a free transfer. So, I have two free transfers for game week 37 where I can switch out these uh, Brighton guys for some other players. I uh, could potentially do Gross to uh, Son here as well, but I don't think I would bench any of these guys. Maybe Garnacho out for Son. So I could do Gross to, uh, to Son already this game week, but I'm saving that for game week 37 most likely. Uh, Palmer's not going to be the captain uh, in this game week. He would probably be Holon. As you can see, two transfers. I get uh, I sell Saka basically for uh, De Bruyne, and I sell Gross for Son, and I have this game week uh, 37 team with 15 doublers. Um, so yeah, double game weeks all around. I use my bench boost this week as well. Really nice to have a wall card right before the bench boost. A lot of things can happen, obviously. Maybe because um, this is with uh, some injury returns in mind. If Reese James is back for Chelsea, Gusto's going to be under threat for his position. If Wilson is back for Newcastle, then Isak's going to be under threat for his position as a striker. Uh, if Nkunku's back fit, he would be really nice to have for this double game week as well. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do, but. I'm also really flexible, obviously. Gaming 35 is pretty far into the future still. So maybe things will look a lot different. And the, these players, a lot of these players, some of these players might be injured. Some of these players might be not ideal to have this game week. I can mix and match, basically, and just have uh, pretty much 15 double gaming players in Gaming 37. Pretty close to the Gaming 37 deadline compared to people that are wildcarding in 30 or 31 and are going to carry those players through for six game weeks where they don't have to get injured or don't have to be putting out of favor in their team, for example. Uh, so I think I'm in a much better and stronger position if I can wall card in game 35 and still have a really good team for game week, uh, game week 30 through 34 as well without really sacrificing much. I would have, uh, as you can see, 10 out of 11 double game week players in 34. I'd have 15 out of 15 double game week players in game week 37. And I'd have 5 out of 6 potential double game week players in game week 35 as well. So I think this tactic is going to end up being really nice for me in the end. And I'm not really that regretful of, of doing it uh, either 
Uh, even looking through to game week 38 with this team, I still think it's a pretty good team in general. We have Spurs players against Sheffield United away. I do have Vicario for that uh, that instance as well to have uh, those Spurs players, and I have Vicario on the bench here for the double game week. Uh, could also have someone like Richarlison in midfield, for example, if De Bruyne is looking, if Man City are going through in the Champions League uh, and the FA Cup final, and they're still, and if and if they have won the league at this point as well, then maybe the uh, likes of De Bruyne and Fold will be rested, and that will, might also affect what I do on the wild card in game 35 as well. So again, I have a lot of options, um, and also depends what happens here in this final game week in game 38. I do have one free transfer that I can use if there are some team leaks, some people that are, that are not playing this game week. I think Son's going to be my captain regardless here. Uh, I think Spurs will be really good. Hopefully Nkunku will be fit to play the latter stages of the season because I would really like to have him as a differential because uh, I think he's one of the best players in the Premier League if he gets fit and uh, ready to play. So I just really like the look of this team in general and I don't regret free hitting in 29 even though game week uh, 29 was a really bad week. But again, that's sort of just outcome bias, I guess. Uh, it could have happened uh, a lot differently looking back at my team. I think Alanga could have easily had a bigger score, Bowen could have easily had a bigger score, Regulon could have easily had just a normal score, which would have been a lot better than his minus three points in this game week. If Regulon doesn't get sent off, maybe Tony gets some attacking points, maybe Ariola gets a clean sheet as well, that could, hap could have happened this game week. Uh, and obviously Spurs against Fulham, if Spurs, um, which I didn't mention, Udogi had a pass for Madison, who was really like this close to scoring as well. If that would have happened, I would have had a huge hole from those guys as well. So. This could have gone a lot better for me in uh, Game 29, but all in all, looking at this tactic of free hitting in 29, um, dead ending into Game 34 and wall cutting in 35, I think it's looking pretty good at this point. Um, and obviously helped by the fact that FA Cup results went in my favor. So, so yeah, pretty hopeful for this um, for the upcoming few few game weeks in, in FPL. Um, and pretty hopeful that I'm going to get into the top 10k eventually. I was hoping to get that, get there in game 29 on our free hits, but that didn't happen. But I still got to push on and hopefully get into the top 10k and potentially even higher this uh, this uh, season. So all in all, pretty happy with my season so far and uh, excited for things to come. And I'm also excited for things to come on this YouTube channel. I'm going to do a couple of videos next week as well. I've done obviously now the weekend walkthrough or the FPLI test. I've done that sort of in this uh, video, which is going to be which has been sort of like an amalgamation of a couple different videos, like the game week review, the FALI test, and then also my future outlook. So covered a lot this uh, in this video, but I'm going to have a lot of videos uh, next week as well. Probably going to look through uh, some of your teams again. So if you're watching still uh, at this point of the video, please uh, send me your team IDs in, uh, in the comment section and I can look at your team and have them featured in a video for next week as well looking at uh, your plans for gaming 30 onwards and see what I would do in your instance, whether you're free hit in, free hit it in 29 like me, or if you've kept your free hits for a future game week and then look at your teams and decide what I would do if I was uh, in charge of your teams for the rest of the season, basically. So that's going to be one of the videos for, for next week. Now they have Phil school podcast with Kevin. We're going to discuss more gaming 29 with him. He obviously didn't free hit in 29 because he doesn't, doesn't have his free hit uh, left. Uh, and that ended up working out well for him. He actually got more points than me this week, which is kind of embarrassing, but but still. Um, so I'm going to have the FPL School podcast coming up. I'm going to have the team selection, obviously, on the Friday with my latest uh, plans for Gaming 30, which is most likely still just going to be Salah in and captaining him. Um, so I'm going to have that as well and uh, a couple more videos planned as well. So excited for the future, both in terms of FPL and in terms of FPL content. And I hope you're excited as well and that you have subscribed. If you haven't already, please do do so now. If you've lasted this whole video, then uh, and, and and enjoy the video as well. If you've given it a like, for example, uh, then please subscribe as well and uh, help me get closer to 1,000 subscribers and then potentially pushing on to 10,000 subscribers, which is, has been my goal for the season. Uh, it's going to be a struggle, I think, but getting into the top 10k in FPL, I think, is going to be a simpler task potentially. So yeah, hopefully that will happen this uh, this season, but we'll see. Anything can happen still. And with that, I'm going to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.